What's up guys, my name is Ace, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over 10 advanced tips for Apex Legends. Now, I've already done the top 20 beginner tips for the people that are just getting into the game. The tips in this video are designed to take it to the next level. Some of these are more advanced than others. Some might be obvious to people that have been playing the game for a while now. But even for some of you people that have invested a ton of time into this game, you may learn a thing or two from these tips. So without further ado, let's hop into the list. Keeping in mind, this is in no particular order. And first up, we have the crouch swap technique. What this means is you're able to swap guns nearly instantly, and all you have to do is crouch after you hit the swap button. So when you hit the button to swap weapons, immediately crouch, and then that will cancel out the swap animation and allow you to get your gun up and ready to fire sooner. Just to show you how effective this technique is, this first clip is doing a standard swap without any sort of a crouching technique. And with this, you can see the time between shots is decently high. Now let's have a look at how fast you can swap with the crouch swap technique. As you can see there, it is nearly instant, and you can even do it faster, especially for you PC players out there. It is a lot easier to do on PC, and I'm sure you can do it a little bit faster on console. It's a little more difficult, but with practice, you can get it down pretty consistently. This is something that I highly encourage you to practice because oftentimes in Apex Legends, you are required to switch weapons within the middle of a gunfight, and every millisecond counts. This brings us to the second tip, and this has to do with countering Caustic's traps that he can leave around the map. These things can be incredibly annoying, especially when they're set up on a choke point, and they can give that enemy Caustic an early indication that you guys are coming through that choke point. These things are actually super easy to deal with. All you have to do is shoot the base of the trap. You see there's a little red stripe. Aim for that red stripe, put one bullet into it, and it instantly deflates the trap. This is extremely effective. It's an excellent tip if you want to get through a choke point and you don't want to have to deal with all that gas shoot that red ring and the trap will be gone. Keep in mind though, this only applies if the trap hasn't been tripped yet. If you shoot the top of the trap first, that will set the trap off and at that point, it'll be too late to shoot the ring below to deflate it. Same thing goes if you or your teammates get too close to the trap and you set it off in that way. Once it's already spitting the gas out, it's too late to shoot the ring and deflate it. Moving on to tip number three, this is one of those tips where it's not like super advanced, but there's still a lot of people out there that don't realize you can do this. You can actually break doors in Apex Legends by kicking them. So when you get up to a door, you can melee it. One single melee attack won't break it, but it will swing that door open violently. The second kick will completely break the door. And this is great if somebody traps you in a doorway with one of those caustic traps, for instance, or maybe somebody's blocking the door. If you've downed an enemy player, that downed enemy player can actually block a door and trap you into a room or trap you out of a room. You can break through that really easily just by kicking the door twice. An added benefit to this is if somebody is standing on the other side of the door blocking it, when you kick the door, it actually deals damage to that enemy player. So if you ever run into those situations where you've got that standoff where an enemy player is standing behind a doorway and blocking it, just kick it open. You'll deal that damage, you'll knock him back a little bit, and then you can follow up with your gun. Next up, something I've noticed that a lot of people don't realize yet is you can technically auto run in Apex Legends. Even on the console build of the game, all you have to do is, while you're at a full sprint, open up your map or your inventory. When you do this, as long as you were sprinting at the time of you opening that up, your character will continue to sprint in a straight line. This allows you to put markers on the map, or more importantly, I've found, it allows you to manage your inventory a little bit. Maybe you have something you wanted to drop for a teammate, but you don't really have time to stop and, and go into your inventory and then select the item to drop and then drop it. You can do all of this on the move. Just make sure you point your character in the right direction so you're not gonna run into anything immediately and make sure you hit that button as your mid sprint. This brings us to the next tip, which I find to be very important information to know. And this is the difference between a care package and a lifeline package. Now, obviously a lifeline package is the ultimate ability for lifeline where she calls in that care package and it comes to the ground. But there's also the other type of care package, which will just drop in random locations around the map throughout the match. And the reason you want to know the difference between these two is if it's a lifeline package, that means there are definitely enemies within that area. Whereas if it's a care package, there may or may not be enemies in that area. Also, it's worth noting that you can't get those golden weapons in a lifeline package. They only come with the randomized care packages that come on the map. So as a result, those care packages tend to have higher value than a lifeline package. So to spot the difference before it even hits the ground, the first thing to know is lifeline packages come to the ground much, much faster than a care package. You can see this really clearly as it's dropping from the sky. Lifeline packages come in pretty much immediately and they go straight to the ground. Care packages fall much slower. Second, care packages are announced by your character with a voiceover line. They'll say something like care package inbound or something along those lines, whereas they won't say that for a lifeline package unless you are the lifeline that called that lifeline package in. 
Another difference before it hits the ground is care packages will show up with a little ripple effect on the mini-map, whereas lifeline packages don't. And finally, a super easy way to tell if it's a lifeline package or a care package once it's already on the ground is they're simply different colors. Lifeline packages show up and they have like a blue accent around them, whereas care packages have a red accent around them. So hopefully that helps you out. I've really found this has helped me in my decision making in a lot of situations, knowing whether that's a lifeline package that somebody just called in, or if it just happens to be a random care package coming in on the map. This brings us to the next tip, which I normally wouldn't put as an advanced tip, but there are still so many people that don't know about this, so I did want to throw it in this video. You can ping what you need from your teammates. All you have to do is open up your inventory and then hover over the item that you're missing and hit the ping button. A great example of this is if you need magazine. a knockdown shield or a regular body shield or something, ammo. go over the body shield slot and hit the ping button and it will tell I your teammates that you need a body shield. Now, for a lot of the items in the game, especially attachments and stuff, this isn't really all that relevant. And don't spam your teammates saying that you need a, a barrel stabilizer, for instance, because they probably don't have a spare one to give to you. The most important use for this is to ask for a specific ammo type. Now, the way you do this is you hover over the weapon that has the ammo type that you're looking for, and you ping that weapon. This will ask your teammates for that specific type of ammo, and this is really important to be doing because a lot of the times I don't know which weapons my teammates have exactly, and I don't know that they need ammo for it, so a lot of times I'll just be running past that ammo type and I won't be marking it for them. Whereas if they ask for that specific type of ammo, I'll keep an eye out for it, and if I see it, I'll ping it on the ground for them to pick it up. So don't go too crazy with this, but especially if you need a specific type of ammo, make sure to let your teammates know. Moving on to tip number seven, this has to do with the hitboxes. A lot of the people that really keep up with the Reddit community, for instance, will already know about this, but I did want to point it out. The hitboxes are different for every character. In addition to that, the hitboxes don't always align perfectly with the character models. A great example of this is Pathfinder. The hitbox for Pathfinder is actually much bigger than his character model currently, although Respawn has stated they will be making adjustments to this in the not-too-distant future. But this is really important when it comes to character selection, as well as your confidence going into a fight against a particular character. Now, I will leave a link to the original video of the guy that did all the detailed testing with this down below if you guys want to check out all of the details on the different hitboxes. But just know, Wraith has by far the smallest hitbox, and then when you start getting up to Pathfinder, Gibraltar, and Caustic, they have really really, really large hitboxes. Moving on to the next tip, this is another one of those really technical minor tips, but will definitely help in some situations. And this is, you can break your fall by meleeing right before you hit the ground. So if you do jump off or fall off of a pretty high area, when you hit the ground, there'll be a short period of time where you can't sprint, you can't really move around very much. You're kind of recovering from your fall. In order to cancel out that animation and begin sprinting immediately after landing, all you have to do is melee just at the moment you're about to hit the ground. Now this is relatively forgiving, so it's not like you have to hit it on the exact frame or anything, but this does take a bit of practice to get that timing right. Once you do this though, you'll be able to get back to sprinting much sooner than if you didn't use this technique. Moving on to tip number nine, this has to do with the most effective melee technique. So if you guys didn't know, in this game, there are three different melee attacks. There's the regular punch, which just happens if you run up to somebody and hit the melee button. There's the kick, which happens if you jump and then hit the melee button. And then finally, there's the uppercut, which will happen if you hit the melee button while sliding. Now, all of these melee attacks do the same amount of damage to an enemy player. However, they have different recovery times. And it turns out kicking is actually the fastest technique, so you can get way more kicks off within a certain period of time compared to punches. And therefore, in the beginning of a game, if you don't find a gun and you're just stuck in that melee fight, kicking is usually your best bet as long as you can still maintain that melee accuracy. So finally, this brings us to the last tip from this video, and this is more of a gameplay related tip. And this is quite simply, enter your fights by using your throwables first. I don't see very many people do this, especially when I play with randoms. It seems like they just want to shoot first and ask questions later. It is much better, especially if you're ambushing an enemy team and they don't know you're there. Hit them with your throwables first. Now, I would recommend using either arc stars or frag grenades to lead with your fights, not so much the thermites. Simply because arc stars are great because they stun the enemy if you get a hit with an arc star, which means when you follow up with your gun, they'll be much easier targets to kill. But having said that, frags can also be an excellent option, especially if you're approaching them from a pretty decent distance away, because the cook time on a frag grenade starts the moment it leaves your hand, and therefore if you're throwing it a long distance, by the time the nade gets to them, it's already ready to explode, and that means they won't have time to escape if you throw it right. 
Whereas with arc stars, the timer before it explodes, that will start once it connects with something, which means if you don't hit the enemy directly and they're really paying attention, they can sometimes get out of the way of that arc star before it goes off. But in either case, if you're about to get into a fight against an enemy that doesn't know you're there, always lead with a nade because that will set you up much better once you get into the fight. But with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's 10 advanced tips that I have for Apex Legends. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what tips would you add to this list? I may do more of these types of videos in the future if I can come up with another good list of tips to share with you guys, as I'm sure we will be picking things up as time goes on. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time. Yeah.